was gonna even ever was this position, but I would catch myself actively moving away from the book when Dimitri stepped closer to Rose. And welcome back once again to another bookish review. Today we are talking about the book Blood Promise by Rachel Mead. Now this took me a month to read, which is why I don't solely do book reviews on my channel. Because I'm a slow ass reader and I like to take my time with story. You know the deal by now, there will be spoilers for this book and so the books before it. So if you do not want this book spoiled for you or the ones that come before it because this is book four, you can skip off this video now and come back to it when you've read it. Now, this book, we see that Rose finally leaves the academy because she wants to go after Dimitri, who has been turned into a stripper boy after the attack that happened on the school. She had made a promise to him to kill him instead of living him and live that evil existence. So she, she leaves Lizza behind, which kind of tears her up inside. She leaves everything behind and rushes to Russia rushes to Russia. <laughs> anyway, in the hopes to find him because that's where she thinks her best chance of finding him is. At first, this book starts out a little boring because Rose just ends up playing house with Dimitri's family, having told them the terrible news that he had been turned to Goy. And for a long time, she just mopes around and lives with his family. We also learn about a group called the Alchemists, which are people that know about the vampiric world and help the Dampiers and the Guardians clean up the Strugoi bodies with a potion that only they know how to make. And we learn about them too on this whole adventure in Russia. Like she's a part of their family. That part was a little boring, but in her adventures with the family, we get to find out that there is yet another shadow kiss person with a spirit user Maroi. So as rare as spirit users are, Rose seems to run into a lot of them. You have Adrian, Lizza, their teacher that went insane in the first one, and now this spirit user. Finally fed up with playing house and realizing she has to get on with the quest that she came there to complete, she starts hunting Strigoi with a group of rogue hunters or guardians and starts interrogating them trying to find any hint she can of Dimitri. Now this is going to get into some deep spoilers, so if you don't want these spoilers please leave now, but it's essential to talk about this to talk about my feelings of the book. So. You can leave now if you don't want it majorly spoiled. In her hunting down Maroi, she ends up running into Dimitri himself. Seeing him, she hesitates to kill him, where he chastises her and says, You disobeyed one of my main rules of Strigoi fighting. Never hesitate. And just knocks her out. She wakes up in a comfy bed in a gorgeous loft, having no idea how she got there or why she's there. She is being held prisoner by Dimitri himself, who she says is like Dimitri, yet not the Dimitri I love. And it goes on like that. She gets kidnapped by the man she loved who is now turned monster and a killer because he had to kill to survive. Well, he didn't have to kill, but he chose to kill in order to feed. She's stuck with this dilemma. She doesn't know how many Strigoi are in the house she's trapped in. She doesn't know how she's trapped in the house. She doesn't know where she is and she doesn't have any means to contact anyone. She is trapped. But through her time in Russia, she has been still diving into Liza's head. So she uses Liza as kind of a way to escape, escape her current imprisonment and keep an eye on her, because she still cares about Liza even though she left. And we come to find that Liza has turned into this irresponsible, heavy drinker, party girl that doesn't seem anything like her. And at first, Rose assumes it's just because she can't handle that Rose left and everything else. But that comes to a head later. She comes back to herself and tries to figure out a way out of it when Dimitri comes in and she asks, why didn't you kill me? And he goes, I wanted to give you the chance to awaken, but I wanted you to choose to awaken on your own. I don't want to have to force you. She goes, but any other Strugoi would have just killed me. He goes, if I wanted to kill you, you would be dead, not here right now. And in this, in her time stuck with him, we don't know how long she was captured by him, she doesn't even know. She becomes the one thing she 
feared to be a blood whore. She lets him drink from her and becomes addicted to the way that it feels when a vampire drinks from him. I don't know if Dimitri did it intentionally because he knew what effect his vampire venom would have on her, but he did it. He bit her and put her in this drug stupor. So she was basically a drugged captive, though he never went any farther than biting her and kissing her and he never went any farther. He was using sex and her love for him as a way to try and coerce Rose into becoming Strigoi and I'm just like, girl, you need to run, you need to get out, but she can't do anything because she can't think clearly because she's in this drug state and she does still love Dimitri and hopes beyond hope that there is some shred of the Dimitri she fell in love with still there. And this whole time you're sitting there reading, feeling absolutely helpless and being like, Rose, you've got to wake up, you've got to get out. You're either going to end up dead or end up straight away if you don't do something and do it quick. Like, it's very tense. And, like, you're as confused as she is because she, like I said, she doesn't know how outnumbered she is. She doesn't know anything. And the reader, you're stuck in the same position. You don't know anything that's going on or even if she'll be able to get out. And it was very intense. It was definitely the calm before the storm in the beginning because it was boring at first, which is why it took me a month to get through this book because the, the beginning was so boring. But man, did it get intense toward the middle of the book and onward. And it was really good. And it was really well written. And Dimitri was perfectly terrifying. Like there were moments he'd come close to her and I would actively move back. And I wasn't even in Rose's position, but I would catch myself actively moving away from the book when Dimitri stepped closer to Rose. And that is so telling about Rachel's writing that she can do that to the reader themselves to get them to physically be like step back from the book as the character steps forward. Dimitri is a very intimidating villain and to see her overcome those struggles and finally get out and go through her battle was so like not great because she went through it but it was so like Yes, you did it, you're out. You didn't need help to save yourself, but it's not over yet, not by a long shot. But I think before I go into Spirit Bound, I am going to take a break from these characters because I've been reading about them a lot and read something small, Yoda in action. This is a small book with really big writing, so I'll probably be done with it in about a half hour to an hour, depending, but I just need a break from Rose and her mindset for a minute because this is going to be the fifth book so I need to step away. I feel that when book series are more than four books long I tend to need a break from the characters and that's okay. I'll come back to it when this is done. I'm excited to see what happens next. This book series has been great so far and it's only continuing to get better.